So first of all, let me start by quoting a very important report that was just issued last week by the European Commission and by the OECD, which is else at a glance for Europe in 2016. Two major phenomena quoted in this report. First of all, the popula population aging, which remains a big problem. We know that one third of the population will be aged 65 years and more by 2060, when it was only one in five last year in 2015. And in parallel to that, there is a st stretch budget allocated to healthcare. And this report stated that only less than 10% of the GDP is invested by the member states in healthcare, which is really the threshold for the health system to procure the better health outcome to, to the population. Combined with that, this population suffer more and more from non-communicable disease, cancer, diabetes, which require a more innovative type of technology and each time, in fact, impacting on the health system. So why not preventing the preventable? Within the prevention measures that are available for the adult population, there is obviously vaccination. New type of vaccines have been made available over the past years. New generation of influenza vaccines, new generation of pneumococcal vaccines, uh, Zoster is now, vaccination is now possible and still pertussis. So, the older population, and from the age of 50, we know that physiologically the immune system is waning. This is what we call the immunosenescence. So this population is at higher risk of being infected by this bacteria, virus, vaccine preventable. And when they are infected, it's even more severe. Complication that can lead really to loss of autonomy in the older population and ultimately death. In addition to that, and it's important for the system, this adult population has a huge socioeconomic contribution. Um, they are part of the labor force, I mean for the youngest one, and also for the oldest one, they are tax contributors, they are social carers, they are taking care of the grandchildren, they are taking care of one another, which make them having a, a huge contribution to the system. And in the UK, for example, a couple of years ago, they estimated this net contribution to 40 billion pounds, so even doubling in the next decade. So can we imagine that? So meaning that from a clinical point of view, from a socio-economic point of view, vaccinating the 50 plus population is justified. The scientific community, the policy maker, the patient organization, the citizens, the institution have all recognized that it's written in the council conclusions that were published in December 2014, calling for a live course approach to vaccination, which is recognized as uh, an effective tool for public health. So over the past two years, um, the member states, there were some progresses because the calendar were extended with new vaccination for this population, but still the coverage rate are suboptimal. Let's just look at influenza, for example, which is well established for many years. The coverage is only 44% as compared to the 75%, which are the European goals. And if collectively we would reach 75%, 10,000 uh, lives would be saved each year. So it's our collective responsibility to work in partnership in order to make sure that there is always new vaccines, more effective and more safe vaccine available to this adult population, that there is the active surveillance system in place for the epidemiology, the disease, the coverage, the vaccine confidence, and that all together for the individual and the collective benefit, we are building an healthier aging Europe thanks to vaccination, effective vaccination of this uh, adult population age 50 and more.